All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Justin Brightop here on the Unboxing Thor YouTube channel. Today, we are gonna be trying to repair one of these solar lights, solar motion lights. The thing I, I'll show you first, okay, is this one works, but it burned out, see if we can get it to come on for you. It burned out a bunch of these lights here, and you see here, the one that's, it, it got moisture in there somehow, there's water, it's actually coming out. Look at that, it's actually coming out the bottom. That's good, we want it to. So we're gonna drain all that water out of there, get a paper towel. I think it got in around the solar panel. So we need to take this whole thing apart, take the lithium cell out, and we wanna try to replace one of these lights with one from this one. This unit here is shorted out. It's out one out of the, I think, 10 or more I got in the mail to review, and this one happened to be shorted out, and the battery inside was toast. And the first thing we wanted to do is try to turn it off. So uh, if we could get the moisture out, that'd be super. And I'm thinking there's three screws here. Tap it a little bit. Now, what I want to do, I don't know if all the screws are loose or not, but I want to try to pop this out of here since that, there's water coming out anyway. There we go. Got some action now. It's like this fixture itself is full of water. It's not just, there we go. Look at that. Okay, so there's a circuit board here with the, with the lights on it. That's what we probably need to change. Um, we probably don't even need to go any further than that if we can just get the one off of here. But I would still like to figure out where the water is and get it out of this thing. Let's pour this onto the paper towel here. Get all the water out of this. Oh man, that's a mess. Okay, let's take off these two screws and take a look at our board here. Okay, so we do have a positive and a negative with our board, so that's good, they're tiny. But now let's see if we can just wipe all that off really quick. I don't really wanna reuse this cover since it's all yellow and rusty and I think that's rust. I think that's what that is. So there's a, there's a gasket goes around this and that might come in handy but we'll set this to the side now I'm still curious if the water came from the main unit or if it came in through those screw holes and I'm starting to think it came in through those screw holes so I'm gonna get this uh, wet paper towel out of here and put a dry one down again because I don't want anything to get shorted out any more than it already is we'll go ahead and if I as soon as I turn this upside down it's gonna want to turn on because of how it works so I can try to take it apart standing up I don't know if we're going to find any water in this main unit. I don't think we are. I'm hoping we won't. It doesn't actually feel like I'm finding a screw down in there, but I'm going to try again. I haven't had this one apart before. I had the other one apart, but not this one. And it doesn't seem like it wants to come apart. There's something different about this one. The other one, I stuck this screwdriver down in here and I got screws. And I'm looking down in here with lights and I cannot see a screw. I don't know what's happening down in there. Well, whatever's in there, I'm unable to deal with it. So I'm going to leave, you know, I'm going to put this thing back together and just, I'm not going to take the battery out because it doesn't want to come apart and it's working. So the other one I got apart, I could take it apart again and show you guys the inside of it if you wanted to see it. Um, I had to remove the, uh, there, see the screws come right out of this one. I had to remove the battery cell out of this one because it was it's so shorted out and the cell was actually um, ruined because this one shorted so here's what you got in here your power cell goes here and it's just a standard, I'd have to look it up again what kind of power cell it is, but it's just a standard powder, power cell like these and flashlights. 
And why this is shorting out, I don't know exactly. It could be these two wires right here. Could be a lot of different things. It looks like there's a lot of um, a lot of length on these wires. Um, the one for each side goes across to the other side of the board. So that's kind of interesting. Anyways, but for whatever reason, this unit is completely shorted out. So we're going to have to try to remove its lights and see if any of them still work when they're not attached to this thing. So I was able to push this with the screw from the back side a little bit, the one that didn't want to come out. So this uh, side of the lens has already popped up and that's helpful to me. And look at that, it's dry as a bone and it looks very nice. So this is the one we're going to harvest and put into the other one if it works. And we'll transport this light as well. And it looks like this rubber or gasket or the gasket on this one might not be as good as the gasket that was on the other one. If this makes a noise on both, when I connect it both ways, it should mean that there's a short. And that can either mean that these lights are bad or that the circuit board's bad. It says it's seeing 3.5. Uh, something resistance, I think it's ohms or something. Uh, some resistance, about 5 ohms of resistance. So that means the circuit board is not shorted out and it should work properly, assuming that the lights work and everything. So there's no voltage that I can see here written on this. So we'll just swap them out and see if it works. All right, so the red one we're assuming is positive. So we're going to put, oh, it's even got a plus there. We're going to put a black dot next to our negative on both of them so it's easier to see. This one has a plus and a minus two but they're actually underneath the wires so that's why I didn't see them at first. So marking them will just make it easier because then I don't have to look for the little things on the circuit board when I'm doing this. Okay, do not try at home. One of the things here is that if I screwed this up, I would need solder wick if I soldered these together. And I do have solder wick, but I didn't bring it in yet. So hopefully I won't need that because um, I don't want to use it anyway. Now I'm holding the soldering iron up like this, even though the holster goes down while it's heating up because heat rises and I don't want the handle to get hot. So I'm holding the end up in the air. It's starting to get warm, but it's not quite hot enough yet. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, it's starting to look shiny. Yep, okay, we were hot enough to try to do this. So let's see if we can get this to remove itself from the board here. I removed my ground wire. There, we removed our positive, and this is our good one. So we're going to see if we can get these wires free. And we don't need this one. This one we can move to the side. This is our bad one. So this is for parts. And this one is our good one that we don't want to turn on while we're working on it. So let's make sure that solar panel stays towards the light while we're working on it. This is one bad cookie. This board here, it looks like a cookie. solder on here is terrible. That's why it doesn't want to come off. It's oxidized really bad. Let's see if we can um, if we can put some more solder on this bad board. Maybe that'll help us remove it. You don't want to breathe the solder coming off this, by the way. Oh yeah, that is like completely calcified. I can't get solder to stick to it. It's it's burnt like a Krispy Kreme. Oh, the ground side acts like it wants to play. There we go. We got the ground side to do something. The hot side, I don't want to solder these together, but it doesn't matter right now.
It also doesn't matter if I overheat this circuit board. There we go. Because it's the bad one. So put our bad one over there. Now, ideally, to do this the right way, I would have my hemostats here to attach this uh, these wires to make it easier. But you didn't come to watch this video because you wanted to see me do it the easy way, did you? Let's see here, we need to put just a little bit more solder on here. We don't want so much solder that the two fuse together. That's that's the thing we got to avoid. Okay. There, those look nice and clean and shiny. There, a positive wire is attached. And you may or may not approve of how it's attached, but if it works, that's what we're going for here. This isn't the common core where it's close enough. This is it works or it doesn't work. We're going to find out. Not everyone's a winner on this game. Still haven't convinced the wire to go where I want it to go yet, so... Aha. Okay, now we need to test it. Let me shut this off, make sure I don't burn myself. And what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure it's not shorted. Visibly inspecting it. Doesn't look like it's shorted out. Aha, look at that. All the lights come on. All, yeah, I want to do it dim so you guys can see it. All uh, eight lights or however many are there, come on. So that's success. Now we just have to put it back together and use some silicone gasket maker we get from Napa Auto Parts or wherever this came from to put this back together and make sure it doesn't leak again. This guy first before we can put him in there. So I'm going to line up these guys and then we'll get two screws. Oh no! No! Let's see if we can start one with my fingers or something here and then get the screwdriver. Because again, I don't have that third hand that some of you have that were in Japan during the Fukushima explosion, radiation, or maybe been swimming out in the ocean again or something, you know. I don't have that third hand, so I always have... I mean, I'm not saying I'm not a guy, you know. Some people will say a man has a third hand, and that's a whole other thought process. But uh, I'm not a eunuch, okay. I haven't been had any of those issues, so I'm still intact. So assuming that this all works, and we don't need to replace anything again, um, let's see, it was this one, wasn't it? This was the one we just, yeah, this one's dry, this one's still a little wet, so this is the one we just replaced. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my silicone, is it a bug? He's a live bug. A yeah, live bug is camouflaging himself into our project here. Okay, we're gonna put as much silicone in the back of this thing as we think is possible or necessary. We might need this little screwdriver to help us out. I don't know. But this will not be coming apart again after this. I don't think. It's going to be pretty, I mean, I'd have to get all the silicone off if I was going to take it apart again, so. Yep, 
Now, one of the tricks here is somewhere down in here there could be a leak. So, uh, I think we should just fill this hole. It's pretty clean down in there. Let's just fill it up. Yeah, there's one more problem with this. Because I put the silicone down in the hinge there, it's going to have to be fixed in one position. It's not going to be moving this way anymore. Um, it's going to be locked in position once I get it where I have it. I want to have it about 45 degrees there. So let's just go ahead and leave it about right there. That should be fine. But I'm going to put some more silicone down in here first because I already know what direction the solar panel is going to go for where I have this mounted. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that now. Need another paper towel. Another paper towel would be good. Or even a cotton swab. Alright, got another paper towel on standby in case we need it. I'm going to open this up and use the cotton swab to apply the silicone so I don't get it all over my fingers. I don't want to get it on my screwdriver either. So let's go ahead and just put some on here. And we'll just put that down into that joint. And we've got to turn it. We've got to turn the solar panel all around to get it all the way around. So. the elements and then I'm going to tilt this up in the position it's going to be in turn it around and we'll inspect this a little more and I don't need to add anymore I'm just spreading it around to make sure it gets down into that joint see so here's the joint on the back side here's how it looks in the front now and I can still tilt this for now and so this is going to sit on the building with the solar panel facing the sun so we should be just fine. I'll go reinstall this and show you what it looks like once I've reinstalled it. We'll let the silicone dry. There, hopefully now this light won't have any more issues, won't get any more water in it, and will work just fine. Alright, well thank you for watching. God bless you. Do you want to learn to follow the commands of the Almighty One True God? If you do, go to ChristianCourts.com. There's a free PDF book you can download, audiobook, and video where you can listen and learn God's laws. Make America great again. Help establish Christian law in communities all across the world. God bless you. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And just bless you. Please click the links in the description of the video and go to ChristianCourts.com. Click the donate button because we need your help. Get the Blazing Hog 4G LTE internet. It's available anywhere. There's T-Mobile or AT&T signal within five miles of a cell tower or 20 miles with a repeater, okay? It's really fast, especially in rural areas or areas where there's no other people around. It's just super, super fast, okay? The other thing that you need to do is check out Stray Talk. I've got a coupon for Stray Talk and if you use that coupon, you're going to get a month free worth of bonus points when you sign up as long as you enroll for the bonus point program that they've got, the rewards. And every time that you make a purchase, you're going to get more points as well. And then I'm going to get points. So if 10 of you sign up for Straight Talk, I should get two years of free service worth of points. And you guys should get two months of free service each. It works on Sprint. It works on Verizon. And it works on T-Mobile and AT&T. Okay, it works on all four networks. You can bring your own phone. You can bring your existing phone, especially if they're unlocked, uh, over to Straight Talk. And you can switch between networks. All you got to do is have either a GSM phone, a Sprint phone, or a Verizon phone. 
and you can switch between the networks. AT&T and T-Mobile are both GSM, so you can switch between them. I don't know if uh, Sprint is, but it's a really good deal. I pay $38 a month for unlimited texting and calling anywhere in the United States. And I also get two gigabytes of data plus unlimited slower data after that, which I've never used all the data as far as I know. Uh, you can get bigger, better plans. You can get a fully unlimited plans uh, from Straight Talk, but I only pay $38 a month. I use my Blazing Hog for all the other internet, okay? And you guys should do the same. You can also check out how to build a moped.com and how to win in court. Those are great resources as well. As well, please go to donate and help me out. I need a new computer and there's other things i need so i can keep bringing you guys videos so thanks again and god bless you bye don't throw your computer into the recycle bin make your computer great again go to www.justuselinux.com